I just showed you how to install the correct version of Chimera to be able to view AutoPack result files such as this HIV model that I'm spinning around here. And now I want to show you how to uh, load files using this relatively simple and intuitive AutoPack file format reader, uh, AutoPack result file reader that's built into Chimera. So let's begin by closing Chimera. Yes, I really want to quit. And I'm just going to show you that the basic instructions for this are on the installation page. And I will post the video tutorial on the tutorials page, which is probably how you got here in the first place under molecular viewers. Okay, so let's go to the install page and just follow along some of the really basic tutorial components. So it tells you to begin that you need to download one of the three zip files here and hopefully by tomorrow I'll have the other two options available. But we'll start simple and just click to download that file takes just a few seconds and it's now available in my downloads folder and all I need to do is find one of the AutoPack result files grab it and drag it onto my Chimera icon which I have loaded into my dock on a Mac uh, you can just drag it into the actual application or of course you can go into the application and click file open and then if you want to filter by auto pack result that's the .apr file and then navigate using this traditional navigation system to get to where you need to go you can do that by default uh, this particular version has uh, some predefined meshes for every molecule. We have another version that actually loads the protein database files and allows you to make adjustments to those. So you could zoom in and make a ribbon representation for the spike protein and make a ball and stick model for all the little sugars sticking off and I'll show you that in a separate tutorial. Right now I just want to show you some of the most basic things to get up and running with uh, the, the more basic predefined meshes. Um, so in Chimera, just going to use some of the really common panels here. Uh, the model panel is probably the most informative in terms of telling you what's in your scene. So we could, um, we could just walk through and turn off all these elements if we wanted to, for example turn off a big one, matrix proteins, bam. I'm going to turn everything back on. I'm just going to show you what I like to do immediately is set up under, I'll just go to favorites and the easiest way to get here is favorites, side view. This gives me a set of, of options. Uh, I can control the, the clipping plane for the camera. And what you'll notice is just how how fast these molecular viewers are compared to the professional animation software packages. They're really optimized to view lots of objects at once. Let's go under effects, turn on shadows. That makes this much more attractive immediately. And I like to set the depth queuing to start around 0.2 and to, to end a lot sooner, around 0.6 to really give us some, some depth into the model. And then if we go back to our instructions, it mentions here that you can load additional geometries into the model. And I know that right now I've loaded the uh, HIV 1.0, so I want to grab this lipid shell as well. And all I gotta do is drag that right into my camera icon and pop, we see this gray shell onto the outside. 
So let's change a couple other fun parameters. Um, I like to knock down this incredibly shiny light here. So I'll increase the sharpness and knock down the value. So I'll get rid of some of those a little bit distracting highlights. Can increase a little more. And then another cool thing you can do, but I'll show you that in a second, is to turn on these uh, these silhouettes. Let's set those to black. And increase the, the value. I think there's a max of four on that, so we've got some nice outlines on our system. Gives it a very distinct look and helps helps the object stand out a little bit more clearly. You can see when I've rotated here that I set my clipping plane a little bit too short. And just like that in real time, we've got very nice view of the scene. I'm just going to show you now. Uh, first thing I want to do though while I'm working, turn off these silhouettes because those are incredibly expensive to calculate. So you can see got a rotation back. So next I just want to show you how to do some basic color manipulation. And I'm going to start by selecting, I'll show you how to color one object at a time. So let's get rid of these pink. I hold control, left click, that selects one pink guy. If I click the up arrow key, that selects all the pink guys. If I click up again, uh, it just keeps working up through the hierarchy, selecting parent after parent. So I can click up and down to select my way back up and down. So I've got all the pink guys selected. I just go to action, color, yellow. Um, these Colors are all just loaded, uh, they're, they're random colors chosen um, by walking through the default list in Chimera in the order that the meshes are loaded. Um, it's not reading currently the, the values that we have in the original files uh, for each one of these ingredients. So I'm going to try to reestablish that. But I'm going to start just by making everything gray. I hold control select one thing and let's just select the entire object. I'm going to go to action, color, dim gray. Okay, and now let's start color coding one thing at a time. So I just want to want to highlight a few objects. I'm going to control select one of my spike proteins, push the up arrow to get the other spike proteins. I'll make him a bright green, similar to the default colors we have. And let's next select all of the HIV-related proteins. So I'm going to pull in this model panel. I'm going to hold Option and drag so I can fit both things onto my screen here at once. I'm just going to select and hold shift all these things that start with sight at the beginning. Click the select key here and I can see that they're highlighted. And if I go to color those, let's choose magenta. Actually, let's choose from editor. I'll just show you, you, can, you could choose uh, custom colors if you prefer. So we'll just Pop the brightest possible magenta we can. Close that. Actually, we'll keep this open. I'm going to hold Command and select and click the up arrow to get all the matrix proteins. And we'll select this blue color here. And let's just color code the capsule back to that blue a little bit. I want a slightly different blue, and I'm just going to so cranked. Okay, nice gray-blue, and then 
Take these back to a kind of a dull yellow. Good enough. Okay. And now let's um, give this shell some transparency. So I'm just going to select that and then click Action. Uh, surface, there's a million ways to get to this. So I'll just set it to 60%. 60% transparent. And again, able to, to manipulate this in real time, which is a great feature. And I'll show you uh, the animation palette, which I'm pretty new to, so forgive me if it's a little clumsy for me to walk through this under Utilities Animation. We get a simple scene graph here. And effectively, all we're going to do is capture the state of the current scene by clicking Grab Scene. And then we'll make a change. So let's do a rotation. We'll add another scene grab there. And then let's do a, a zoom. into this spike. And we'll click. So now I've got three scenes. And let's add them to the timeline. So we click one, we add it, we click the second one, we add it, drag it out to put some frames between it. Click the third one. We add it. Oops. Like that. And if all goes well, we can click play. And it'll slowly work its way through these. Um, it's got a lot of geometry to handle, and again if we if we turn on the silhouettes, that'll be uh, a little bit more for it to handle, but it's clicking through all the frames and we can actually export a movie of this and it'll play back at whatever frame rate you choose for the movie. You can also do a very interesting thing which is render out a storyboard. Um, or you can just click this record button. So and that, that will render out your movie as, I believe, an MPEG. Um, I'll double check to confirm. I click record. And, oh, yeah, um, I forgot they added this feature so you can actually uh, uh, compress it as H.264. So let's give this a try. Saving to my desktop. Camera, HIV 1.0, MOV. And click record, and let's just see how long that takes. I can tell that when this plays back, I think I think of the settings I just saw there were thirty frames per second, so even though this is taking a while to step through, it's probably going to be incredibly fast playback on the order of three seconds for the entire scene, so it'll probably be a little bit jarring. But you can see just how fast and amazing this type of software is that within less than just a, a couple minutes, we're able to set up the molecule, we're able to manipulate it, able to do some very simple zooms. Um, you can do much more sophisticated transitions or fade molecules in and out. Uh, you can animate molecules independently. Set up much more complex things using this animator palette and export a movie. So in less than an hour or two, with a little bit of practice, 
you can have a, a couple of submissions for the, for the HIV visualization contest. Or if you're a scientist, you can have a couple visualizations made for your talk pretty quickly and easily. We're almost to the end. I'm watching the, the playback head here. We're about three quarters of the way through. It doesn't do all these gray frames here, which is good. It, it will stop at uh, three out of three. And then we'll take a look at the real movie to, to see what comes up. I'm zooming in on this big green spike protein. And again, because this was, unlike the, the professional viewers that use Collada files, this is using STL files that are actually grayscale. But the movie's ready on my desktop, so we've applied just a single color to the whole thing. Oops, I'm watching the wrong movie on the desktop. I open the Chimera movie, I'm going to shrink it so it fits onto your screen. And we'll click play. Not bad for less than 10 minutes worth of work. Give it a try. Post some some uh, some movies, and we will continue to improve this software. So keep checking back. We've got some big plans for it in the near future, and you'll be able to access all of the other recipes very soon. And again, um, within the next day or two, I will provide the other files that will be linked here from the installation page that will give you the complete STL version and the complete uh, protein database version so that you can um, modify the molecules as desired. Thanks for watching.